20, 25 minutes. I'm wasted, guys. I'm tired. But we'll get yeah, a bunch of information. That. We'll we'll load you up. Okay. Right. Yeah, we can do that. All right. We are live now. This is Indie Talk with Jesse and Jaron featuring former AWA WWE star and AWF CEO Tony Danucci. How's it going, Tony? Going on, brother. You promised me you're gonna mention USWA too. Oh, oh, you meant that at the beginning, yeah. I thought that you meant little group down, that little that little guy they called Jerry Lawler, I think Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry, the little guy, Jerry Lawler. He literally the people joke, they literally call him in, in Memphis. They they actually a lot of the people said he was the king. I mean, Elvis obviously was incredible, but but they used to say that Jerry Lawler was the king of Memphis. Oh okay. yep. uh, we when when I traveled with him and Brian, there wasn't anywhere you went where they didn't roll out. If you were with Jerry, they rolled out the red carpet, and I kid you not, you didn't pay for a meal. They 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 thought, oh don't worry, Jerry, it's all it's on us, it's on us. <laughs> didn't matter where we went, Nate. He was Jerry was the king. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jet, that's right. He did the the Memphis territories, and he was yeah the king of the the world down there. So uh, we, were, we were so we'd start out Saturday morning at the studio for Channel Five. And then Saturday night, we would go to Nashville Gardens. And then mm-hmm. Sunday off, Monday, Memphis Coliseum. Tuesday, we're down in the Louisville Gardens. Wednesday, we were in Evansville, Indiana Gardens. And then Thursday and Friday were house shows. Saturday, back to Nashville TV, Nashville Gardens. Sunday off, start all over again. Mm-hmm. It was okay. crazy. We were every, every night of the week, ex- wrestled every night of the week except for Sundays. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like a busy schedule, huh? <laughs> it was. It's, it's when they it's had it's when they had a little thing called, and they're kind of coming back. The territories. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the good old territory days. So yeah, it, yeah. It kind of is coming back a little bit, but there's something to be said about territories because I'll, I'll I'll tell you what. Like I remember when I was talking, like Sean and I were talking on the phone, Waltman. And he was down in, oh my God, he was down. I was, when I was with USWA in Memphis, he was somewhere else. I cannot remember the name of the group. And because, uh, and I mean, you learn like he never wrestled for AW, but I wrestled for AWA and it's a complete different, the Northern style compared to like that Southern style that it's, it's completely two different things. And, you, you learn you learn you learn how to work you learn how to wrestle and you get all different types of you, you you add you add it to your arsenal you know memphis was like really big on that old school punching and and working the arm and this and that awa started to do was evolving more into that they were uh, the, they they let the top rope rule go cuz in the old days you, you couldn't go off the top ropes then oh, they, they okay. changed that when I was actually there where he could go off the top ropes. And so we were doing stuff there. And then we went, I went to Memphis. It was completely a different thing. And, you, but that's how you got better. It's tough mm-hmm. if you just go to a camp and you learn one style and you're kind of one dimensional. You know what I mean? It's, it's good if you can learn a lot of different aspects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, so you said talk about that, but uh, how did you originally start watching wrestling and uh, talk about your early career? Well, I mean, I like any kid, we used to. I and let me tell you a story, you got to hear this. <laughs> so, I'm even gonna get, I'm gonna give you their names because I think it even makes it better. So, my my some of my best friends in high school were uh, the names of Gene Wilcox and Bobby Valentine, and we were in, I would say. Eighth or ninth grade, eighth or ninth grade, I think it was eighth grade, I can't remember. And we were downstairs and watching the old AWA, and I held Gene Wilcox's arm, his hand, his wrist, whatever. And Bobby came off the top of the off the reclining chair to drop an elbow on his arm. Uh, we broke his wrist. And wow. we were at Gene Wilcox's <laughs> house. So then we had to proceed to go up. And tell his mom and dad that we broke his wrist. Oh my God, it was it was horrible. We were I was in trouble. I think I was in trouble for two weeks. 
But I mean, <laughs> that's how much we lived and breathed that we used to watch it on TV. We used to do it in the basement. I think a lot of the kids back in the day did, did it, you know, it, it did that wrestling in the basement or in the backyard. They call it backyard wrestling because that's really what kids did when they watched it. Mm-hmm. You know, the Hardys literally evolved all the backyard wrestling. That's mm-hmm. what, that's mm-hmm. where they started in a backyard in an old dumpy ring and uh, it did pretty good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So the, I, I, what happened was I used to lift at a gym called Cedar health and fitness, which was in Apple Valley, Minnesota. And mm-hmm. Scott Hall lifted there. He was big Scott Hall for the AWA. Um, Sean Michaels, Marty DeGenetti, and I, I mean, Marty's wrestled for me on a few shows. I haven't Mar- used Marty. I talked to Marty, but I haven't used him for years. But uh, so we we used actually Marty Gennetti. I had him and made against, remember Lenny Lane? Yep. Oh, yeah. uh, luscious Lenny Lane against Marty Gennetti in the Burnsville Ice Arena. It was, un- we actually had a school that was going they were going under something happened where they lost all this money and that school, we filled that arena and that school is still around today. It's a private school, private Christian school, and it's still around today. It's an elementary school. But uh, anyway, long story short, I'm lifting at the gym called Cedar health of fitness. And I was going to do some bodybuilding. I thought, well, school's over. I'm going to do some bodybuilding. And Marty and Sean said, bodybuilding. There's no money in bodybuilding. You're gonna go see Vern, and I said, and I I, I joked with them. I'm gonna go see Vern, right? And it, I, it was a week later they came back. It was either it was Marty came back with the address, and Sean and him. I was uh, I went on. It was like a Tuesday. When I put my suit on, I put my suit on because I'm thinking I'm going for an interview. I gotta look. I gotta look good. Wahoo! Do you remember the name of Wahoo McDaniel's? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So Wahoo, Wahoo McDaniel's was in the office, and uh, and who was the other one? Oh, Crusher was in the office, and but Vern looks at me and he goes, "You're Italian," and I go, <laughs> I, I, "He goes, and I go, yeah, I'm, I'm my mom and dad, I, I'm Italian." He goes, "We need a good Italian," and he goes, "We're gonna train you." And so they assigned, they gave me to a guy by the name of. I, I worked with Brad Riggins, but the guy that really trained me was a guy by the name of Pat Tanaka. Pat mm-hmm. Tanaka was with Bad Company, Bad Company, the Oriental Express with the WWF. And if you ever watch Pat Tanaka wrestle in the ring, you will never see anybody take the bumps and falls that he is. Yes, Cactus Jack. I mean, but the stuff that Pat did in the ring, he was so ahead of his time. And uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, Pat, I think Pat Tanaka, till uh, uh, to this day, I think he lives up in Fargo, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, and Fargo. He, he was incredible. And Paul Diamond, you know, his tag team partner helped me a lot. Uh, it, but mainly, it was Brad Riggins who trained basically Brock Lesnar when before Brock went down to Louisville, and uh, it was Danny Davis's group. And, uh, and then it was, uh, Pat Tanaka that trained me. And then I literally, I wrestled for a guy for a very short time, uh, because they wanted me to get a little bit, a few matches under my belt called, uh, Eddie Sharkey, who is still here in the twin cities today, Mm -hmm. wrestled for him. And we wrestled in a place called George's. And I remember this like yesterday, a guy named, uh, uh, Christopher Love came, whose real name was, he just passed. I think a year ago, Bert Prentice. Do you know that name? Yep. Yeah, he was with he was he was a, he's a Nashville guy, but he was running Vern's office, and at that time, he was the he was making the decisions. But they came to the show, and uh, literally said that I wouldn't be wrestling for these guys anymore if I wanted to work for them. They wanted to hire me, and that was basically it. I wrestled for Vern literally until he shut his doors down, which I think was 90, 91 or 92. I can't remember. Cause, and I, I remember hanging on too. Cause when he shut his doors down, you know, uh, Eric Bischoff was our announcer at the time. And mm-hmm. Eric said, just hold on, hold on. He's going to reopen. And I, and, and Eric really did think we all did think that they were going to start up again. But they, they, it was something to do with their real estate or whatever they were doing. But they literally closed the AWA down 
And I, I took the offer up. Well, that Burt Prentice had already gone down. He'd gone down to USWA with Jerry Lawler. And, and well, Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett's dad, Jerry Jarrett, were the ones that owned the USWA. Uh, and oh. I, my first match. So I, I said, yeah, I'll go down there. Uh, this is, you got to hear this story. <laughs> so my, my first match is with a guy named Brian Christopher. Okay, so you got to realize, I don't know that Brian Christopher is Jerry Lawler's son. No clue, because the names aren't the same. And we didn't have the big, they, we weren't getting their TV up where we were, and they weren't getting AWA down where they were. Um, actually, they did for a little bit, because we were on ESPN for a while. But uh, so my first match was with, Brian Christopher and one of the things in Memphis is they don't chop in Memphis and I was known and you I don't know if you guys know this or not because I haven't been in the ring for a while but I was known to chop and mm -hmm. and I and 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 hard and that's just yeah. the way that's the way I that's the way I was trained to do it by the guy Scotty Norton gave me my first chop I don't know if you ever heard of Scotty Norton mm -hmm. he was he was actually one time the world's strongest arm wrestler he mm -hmm. chopped me so hard, I swear to God, he put a hole in my chest. But that's mm -hmm. how I learned to chop. And I lit Brian up, and Brian put me in a front face lock, starts choking me out. I punched him as hard as I could, and then we started wrestling again. I get back to the locker room, and uh, uh, what was his name? So Jer uh, uh, Jeff Jared's grandfather was one of the guys that ran – I cannot remember his name. It's killing me, but he ran kind of the locker room and he worked for, he worked with his son, Jerry, Jared, Jeff, Jared said, he goes to me, he says, we don't chop in Memphis. We punch. Yeah. He, and then he goes, did you hear what I said, Tony? He says, we don't chop in Memphis. We punch. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and literally, I don't think I threw another chop the rest of the time that I was down there. Punched it all the old, all the old school, old school. I went away for a little bit of time and I came back and then it was the Memphis. It went from USWA to Memphis, Memphis pro or something. It was Memphis pro. And they put me in this battle Royals called young studs battle Royal or whatever, whatever it was. And that's when I'd already been doing stuff with WWF and they put me in this, this, uh, this match. And I swear to God, it's like when I went away, I came back to a completely different organization. We were light. These guys were lighting each other up, chopping as hard as they could. There wasn't anybody even throwing a punch. And I'm going, I just left Memphis not even a year ago. I come back. All I was supposed to do is punch. And now they're, all they're doing is chopping. It was, it was, it was the craziest thing. I mean, it was like, but I had so many good experiences there. I mean, I tagged my opening match with Brian Lawler. I had Jerry Jared or uh, Jeff Jared and Jerry Lawler make the save because they had all the guys turn on me. And it was amazing how, the reception I got because of that. And I ended up tagging with Luller, Danny Davis, uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett. We were doing a lot of four-way tags. It was you know, against me and Mike Miller, Jeff Gaylord, Brian Christopher. I tagged with Moondog Spot. Remember the Moondogs or no? Yeah. They're, they're a while ago, but if you look them up, these guys were – these are legendary guys. These are the guys that really – that were legendary, especially that Southern, that Southern wrestling. It was uh heavenly bodies with Pritchard and the whole crew. It was just, yep. it was an unbelievable uh, junkyard dog used to wrestle a lot of those shows at that time. Uh, Henning was coming down there. That's when WWF they'd wrestle every Monday. It was a WWF superstar that was wrestling in Memphis. It was, it was, it was a big deal. Like Jerry, uh, Lawler and uh, and uh, and Henning had a big feud, uh, and there and there's many other guys that came. That's what every single Monday in that Memphis Coliseum, it was always one big superstar uh, from the WWF, uh, which you just you would never see that anymore. Where and that's mm -hmm. when I think uh, uh, I, Vince was Vince Senior. I think was still in action then, 
So mm. anyway, yeah, so it was, it's, uh, and I, and I got to say that all the groups that I've for, you know, the USWA and the AWA, they're so rich in heritage. Mm. Uh, the WW, the WWF was cool. I met a lot of guys, made a lot of friends, but I mean, even the AWA, I mean, I, I became friends with Brian Pillman because of me tagging with him in one of the, one of the matches. And every time he came up, even when he was with the old NWA, we'd hang out and go to the cattle company and get crazy. Uh, you guys ever hear of the cattle company? It was, it was, it's a bar. It was a bar we all used to hang out with. And a lot hmm. of the Vikings like Keith Millard and mm-hmm. we'd all, we'd all, that was, it was our big hangout a long, a long, long time ago. We had a lot of fun anyway. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh Jesse. <clears throat> yeah, so I was uh actually I watched the wrestling match of you on YouTube. Uh you were in the tag team match with Derek Duke and you guys yeah. took on Midian, Midian. and Viscera. Yes. <laughs> that was a that was a good match. It was mm-hmm. it was it was a real different it was a match that I wasn't used to because usually like when I was with an AWA or or with USWA, I was more in charge. But you, when when I was all the WWF matches, because I never signed a contract, I uh, you know I, they were real strict with what I did and how I did it. But yeah, it was a good match because. Uh, and the, the funny thing is, is, I was all ready to bring Midian in not that long ago, and then he had passed. So you know, yeah, I don't know how, how long has he been gone. Uh, I, I can check. Like let me. I want to say he's been gone at least five or six years. Five years? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, four. All right. Yeah, where is it? Uh, uh yeah, I'm, I'm almost there. Uh, it's talking about his career and when he debuted, but it's not showing his death. What? He was a huge, he was a huge dude. Mm-hmm. He was a huge, I wrestled, the biggest guy I've ever wrestled. You guys remember Yokozuno? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I wrestled Yokozuno and it was for a group in New Mexico. They flew me in. I wrestled, it was, it was, it was kind of cool back in the day because when you were fresh off TV, even with a lot of these you know, independent groups. Like when I was USWA and AW, they would fly you all. Yokozuno, did you know that he wrestled for a- AWA? Yep. He was oh. Coquina Maximus Overdrive. Yep. and But I wrestled Yoko, and this would have been probably 90, I would say 97 to 99, somewhere in there. And they had me, and it was a body slam match. And the deal was he slams me. A whole bunch of times, nobody sees it. I slam him. And they mm-hmm. said, can you do it? And I'm not weak. You know, I've been lifting weights my entire life. And I don't know, when you when you slam a guy like that, it does. you, you can't wrap your arm around him. And mm-hmm. I, I went to get him up, and I, I like, was, like, I had, I was kind of like, my arms were straight. I was standing in, like, almost a squat position. The minute I went to turn him, it was a snap. I had a hernia. Literally, oh. I oh, the literally, literally, I flew back the next day, uh, and I literally had surgery like a day and a half, two days later. He, he's a, he is a, he stood on my sternum, use, and he had the ropes, and I literally thought that he was going to break my sternum and I was going to pass out. Mm. Unbelievable! Oh, it was unbelievable. He's huge. He is, and he was, he was bigger than he was in WWF. That he was with AWA, he was even bigger. Huge guy, yeah. huge guy. Yeah, definitely a big guy and big, big solid uh, super heavyweight. So, oh, yeah. that's what. You know, let me ask you, why? Why do you think it is? It, is it you that? Am I the only one that notices this? But is are a lot of the wrestlers just not as big as they used to be? They're not. No, it's mainly focused on cruiserweight guys now. So. High flying. That's, what, it, that's yeah. what the people want to see. And we, we've we got some phenomenal, like uh, Levy Cruz and Riley Jackson. I mean, these guys can fly, absolutely mm-hmm. fly. And I, I love watching them. They're fantastic. Mm-hmm. And we've had, 
Oh my gosh, we've had a lot of high flyers over the years, but I there's something to me. I love the nostalgia of the big guy, the guy mm-hmm. bigger than life. I I loved the old the the, the way it was uh, the the physicality of it back in the day. Uh, mm-hmm. The chair shots were stiff. The tables were stiff. I mean, Sid Vicious. I mean, Taker when they remember when Taker was part of the Twin Towers. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, uh, he they were huge, yeah. and they were just huge guys, you know. Mm-hmm. But but like Batista when he was uh, Batista, so Batista used to come when I was wrestling for Eddie Sharkey before I went to AWA. He would actually come and hang out. He was buddies with a guy named Jr. Junior Bonus, who here he was called the Punisher. When he wrestled for us and, and Batista was from Washington. He used to can't come hang out and watch the matches. It Mm. went before he was really wrestling. Batista at one time was, he wasn't the chiseled guy that you remember. He was a huge guy, but he was pushing the 300 pound mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was, he was in the best shape when he debuted or a little bit, a couple years before he debuted. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So we, you are the the AWF CEO. Uh, how did you? How did the uh, starting the AWF uh, go about? Well, when I when I when we moved back to Minnesota because we lived in Florida for a period of time, mm-hmm. and I, I I I took a job like a real job. Uh, mm-hmm. I was working at a, a dealership called Cornerstone. And I was doing their finance and I was their marketing director. And I, you know, I really didn't want to do a lot of the traveling anymore. Like I was doing, I didn't want to go back and forth to Memphis because they Memphis pro would, would I, there was a lot of groups that would still want me, but I just, I didn't want that. I was married. I had, and I had my oldest daughter mm. and I, I said to myself, I'm going to start running a show. I, and I started running a show at a, at a church called Grace Fellowship Church. Which it's over there on one 69 and 610 and it's kind of brooklyn park osseo border and we really had some good crowds there well then i had the i lived in elk river and i had the football coaches come to me and Mm -hmm. say would you ever think about doing a show at our high school for our football team and i'm thinking Mm -hmm. that's what we did when i was with Vern Gagne. we wrestled in high schools I mean, that's mm-hmm. what it was. We wrestled in the St. Paul Civic Center, which is the Excel Center now, in the Rochester Civic Center. But we wrestled far more in high schools and great venues. And mm-hmm. uh, so I did the Elk River High School. And this is, uh, oh, this is 17 years ago. And we really had a good crowd. Mm-hmm. And then we did it the next year, and we had over 3,500 people. And we, we are, are, it's, and so all of a sudden it's like this domino effect and the special Olympic show from Cambridge is anti, cause we've been running their shows for 14 years. They all started contacting me and mm. I said, this is what I got to do, you know, cause I really have a love for the business and a, and a, and a passion, but, mm. but I also, I also know the business I've been doing it pretty much my whole life. I'm not one of these guys who just decides I'm going to be a promoter because I got a lot of money and I want to meet wrestlers. I actually love the business and it's something I've been doing since I've been a kid and I've never stopped. And Hmm. we started running shows and then we, and then I had an offer. I can't remember what the lady's name was, but she ran the CW uh, channel mm-hmm. and and so I had like this. It was I didn't like the time slot. There was like it was like eleven o'clock or so. I don't remember. I can't remember what the time mm-hmm. slot was. And I was with them for about a year, and then uh, and then forty five offered me a better time slot. Mm-hmm. I think we've been with uh, forty five for like the better of ten years now. Mm-hmm. And it's I love the time slot because a lot of families watch their shows and kids. And we're on that noon mm-hmm. time slot. So it's, you know, they're not staying up where it's so late that they're not going to watch. It's kind of neat. And and my audience is, it's, 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 it's families. That's what we're all about. Mm-hmm. Somebody's okay. ringing. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was me. I should turn that off. Uh, I'll put that there. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, we got a, a pr another promoter in here. Uh, Wrestling Gone Wild promoter Tom Burdick says, what up, bro? So, he's, a, he's a good egg. That You know what? You tell him I said he's a good egg. He's a, he's a nice – that's one nice guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're a nice guy, Tom. He says, how's it going, Tony? Tell him it's going good. Uh, he's he's doing well. He's up he's up farther north, right? What's uh, what's is he in the Iron Range area? Yeah, Iron Range, and then I know he's got a show in Keewatin, so he's way up there. So yeah, he does. You know what though? They, they've got a love for up there, and he he answers a good he answers a good call. I mean, he he does a good job. He fills voids up there for a lot of people that don't get to see it. So he does a good. They need Tom Burdick up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom is a good dude, so yeah. Um, I know we were talking about this before the broadcast, but just wanted to give a uh, uh, just address an issue that came up today, or not an issue, but an event. Uh, uh, if anybody doesn't know, there was a, a Texas shooting in elementary school today. There's uh, 19 kids, two adults uh, that unfortunately passed away. We just want to address that issue from the the indie talk show today. So. Yeah, I mean, my my heart my heart goes out to those people, and mm -hmm. there's nothing. I I've got three kids. My there's nothing that you can say to a parent that's uh, that's lost their their child. Their mm -hmm. life will never be the same again. They are gonna hurt. Uh, I've known people that have lost their kids. It's okay. This is this is just my opinion, and this is something that I haven't told you guys, but. This country used to be one nation under God, and I and I really do believe that there is a God, and and I think that this country has really slipped away from that. I think that we've kind of pushed him to the side, and I think we need to put him first again, and I think things can go better. But we've just, uh, I think it's a combination of social media. All the there's so much pressure on people in this society today that we're living in. Yeah, there's just it's we're not we're not in the same world that we were ten years ago. It's mm -hmm. it's it's changed and things are happening that wouldn't have happened ten years ago. I mean, I I, I couldn't imagine somebody coming in and and shooting children. I I, I just mm -hmm. I, I can't even I can't even phantom that. I can't even put my arms around that. I just all you can do is just pray for those parents. Mm -hmm. And their mm -hmm. brothers and sisters and and, and the, the survivors because the, the damage that damage is so deep that damage is so unbelievably deep and uh, there's nothing that you can tell those parents that's gonna that's gonna ever make that go away. The only thing that you can do is pray that God gives them a peace because uh, I just couldn't I like I said I couldn't imagine being one of those parents that the pain and, and, and the hell that they're, they're going to go. Cause it's just started. I, I, we, I have a, a friend who lost her son and he was is 20 or 21 years old. And there mm -hmm. isn't a day that she doesn't talk about it, relive it. It's, it's, it's so hard, but I know when she talks about it, it seems to bring a peace to her. She talks about the good times and the memories and it helps her to talk about it. So whatever helps these parents that I think they should do it. And I think we should all be praying that for them. We need to pray for this country because this country isn't going the right way right now. Mm -hmm. it's, going, it's going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And I like, I, I like my feeling is like I said, one nation under God. And I mm -hmm. think we've got, we've gotten so far away from that. I think we've kind of shoved him to the side. That's my opinion. That's what it is. It's all it is. But to me, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's definitely well said. And yeah, I can't even imagine. I just, I just graduated last year. I'm 19 right now. I couldn't even imagine being like an elementary kid, having to have to see that or even to see it on the news from other schools. So. Imagine it being a brother or a sister of yours. Imagine, mm. imagine what your parents would go through. The pain is it's you. It's not natural to bury your child. You mm. are supposed to, I, I'm supposed to die before my, my kids die. That's mm. just naturally what is supposed to happen. And right. they're, they're going to live with this for the rest of their lives. And, 
like there's nothing you and I can say to take that pain away. That's why we need to pray and we need to pray for our country that it gets to a better state because some of the stuff that that's happening in this country that wouldn't have happened 10 mm-hmm. years ago. It's, 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 it's a tragedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, it's a bit of a hard way to transition, but uh, I'll take it over to, or give it over to Jesse. Sure. Um, so I, I was just reading in the newspaper and you may, I'm going to bring up a name to you and you probably remember this guy. It's probably been years since you guys uh, did the show in uh, Cass in uh, Minnesota at the high school there. Cass in Manderville. Have, yep. You had a guy yeah, on that raised show. raised a bunch of money the for, the, for their weight room. I remember that. Yeah. You hmm. remember a guy by the name of Tone or, uh, Oh, what was his name? Uh, Travis Whiff. Hmm. What? What? Tell me what it's been a lot. So he wrestled for, on the show. Yeah, he he was like a manager for somebody, and then I I think uh, how it went was he was a manager for one of your heel guys, and the hmm. gym teacher was like the good guy, and the guy's name was Travis Weep. I, 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 if I saw him, maybe, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you by hearing the name. I don't remember the name because you yeah. got to realize how many times I've seen locker rooms change. Right. Think about this. I've been doing this since 1988. Mm-hmm. So I've seen mm-hmm. in, in, in the 17 years, the locker rooms that I've seen change. Yeah, so mm-hmm. if I saw him, maybe. Well, are you you got are you going somewhere with this? So tell me why are, you're asking me this. <clears throat> so uh, he's like uh, today. He's like I think he's forty five years old, and he just started doing some amateur wrestling, and he won his first championship as an amateur wrestler at the age of forty five. That is incredible. Mm-hmm. And where does he live? Where is he from? He's from Catherine. Yeah, I, I, if I saw him, I'll guarantee I would remember him. I never forget a face. But I'm one of these guys that I have. A, I, you meet so many people. It just happened to me today. Mm-hmm. I was in Walgreens, and this like Tony Danucci, and da 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 da, and and <laughs> and the lady, and she left. And I go, oh, it was so. I said it was good seeing you, and the lady at the cashier says, "You don't remember her, do you?" And I said, I, ha- I, I haven't a clue. And I was trying to, because you don't want to be, it's just so hard. The older right. you get and the more that you've done. I worked with, we just did our, our second or third show in Siren, Wisconsin, but we haven't been there for mm. five or six years. And we'd done a show in Frederick, Wisconsin uh, mm. la- uh, last summer. And it was a heck of a show. And we had, I had this guy say, hey, I'd love you to come to our school and wrestle. And so I went there and met at the Siren High School. And I looked, I said, well, let me see your gym. He showed me the gym. He goes, Tony, you don't remember me, do you? I felt about (laughs) this big because I had no clue that he was the same athletic director that I'd worked with three, four years ago. You just, it's just so hard because it kind of all runs together. You know, it's just, it's, it's just, you meet so many people and you're the guy meeting all the people. If I was meeting just one guy, it's a lot easier to remember one guy than remember a whole room of people or a booster club that I work with or a church committee, or you, you just meet so many folks. It's hard to take, it's hard to remember. It just, and you hate doing it. So I'll even do this now. So tell me where I met you. And, you know, maybe because, you know, you identify it with wherever it was and right. the time. And, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I do remember. They'll give me a story and then I'll remember. But I swear to God, I didn't remember this athletic director to save my life. And I felt horrible. <laughs> Here they're bringing yeah. me in for a show and he's talking to me like he knows me. Well, because he does. I'm just so damn old. I can't remember anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. anyway. well, that's how that goes. <laughs> yep. So mm-hmm. she wrote on that one. Yeah. 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 All right. We'll go with uh, one final question since you want to do, do about a half hour show. So we're going to think we should go uh, with uh, current AWF stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts on the program? <laughs> on the program? Well, 
I mean, honestly, you're you're talking about what was what's his uh, what's his name again? The blonde haired guy. Uh, you're you're talking oh. about the you're not talking wait the program wait who you talk, you're not about the system. <laughs> no, the, you had the to go team. there, Jaren. <laughs> oh, the system. No, that's something else. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about the program. What do you like? I'm I'm trying to figure out what you're wanting to know. Oh well, actually, I think Jesse was talking about about it a little bit before, but uh, he was saying uh, I believe Kyle Pro smacked you in the face one show, and well, what did he hear no, your thoughts? Tony, on? Tony smacked him. Yeah, oh, I got it back. Yeah, I, got, oh, okay. I smacked him. Okay, so you're asking me what I think. Do I think he's a phenomenal talent? Kyle Pro is a phenomenal talent. Kyle mm. Pro is just he's misled uh with another guy that drinks Fiji water. We'll leave it at that. And <laughs> oh, yeah, that drinks Fiji. Mm-hmm. Uh, big, and he's a horse of a guy too. He's a big old have you ever met him in person? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> met him. He is a big dude. He's a horse <laughs> of a guy, but they're 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 they need to get their egos in check. And Kyle Pro honestly has the potential to go leaps and bounds, but his his head can barely get through a door. He, you know, the minute a guy wins a belt, and that is mm. what happened, he yeah. totally changed from mm. from who he from who he was. And he still has all the talent in the world, but sometimes ego can get in the way and, and hold a guy down. And yeah. do I think he's talented? Yes. Do I mm-hmm. think he's got everything it takes? Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Do I think he's got an ego? Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> I, you know, and, and and I'm gonna tell you what I won't lie to you. When I slapped the taste out of his mouth that last time, it mm-hmm. felt good. I gave him a couple of boots too. I don't know if you remember, but I gave <laughs> yeah, him a couple of boots, and I wanted to do more. I was, I, I he, he's a guy that actually. It's hard to get under my skin. It really is. Mm-hmm. He's a, Kyle Pro is a guy that has the even his music irritates me. I, 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 it's just so cocky and arrogant. Everything about him. Mm-hmm. But I'm also a big enough man to say he's got a ton of talent. Now I'm going to go on record. I'm going to tell you. So Kyle Pro is phenomenal. I'm going to tell you, I think one of the best talents is in all the Midwest and more. Mm. And, and his ego is, <laughs> is a monstrosity of an ego, but mm. there's a guy by the name of the natural Nick Nelson. Mm-hmm. And the guy is phenomenal. The guy it's you guys, it's not all about what, what the problem is today is we think if we do a flip and a twist, with the, with the, with a smile or something that that's wrestling and and it's it it's being tactical it's knowing how to put a series of moves together nick nelson is like a he's like a fine tuned machine in there he can he can go from one move to the next he's like a there's a chess player he's doing th- something to set you up for the next move nick 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 might he talks a lot he's got a Big mouth. Another guy mm. like to slap the taste, but my God, he's got <laughs> talent. The guy, the guy has got. I, I will, I will go on record stating that he's probably one of the best talents in the Midwest and more, if not the best, because there isn't anybody you can't put him in the ring with that you're not going to get a good match with. with you're you're going to get a good match with him every time. He's phenomenal. He's, I mean, Levy Cruz, if you want high flyers and Riley Jackson, that, that combination is, uh, is, uh, is absolutely phenomenal. What's the new guys at this I, I, I'm horrible with names. Northern, uh, oh, they, they, go ahead. Northern Nor- force. Yes. Northern yeah. force. They, they are reminiscence of old school. They remind me of the old kind of Telly Blanchard and Arn Anderson. They're mm-hmm. kind of like what's the AEW group that's with AEW? The the guys that got all the the Ring of Honor belts and everything else. They're oh. they're that old school look. Uh, one guy's bald, the other guy's got a big. They've got they've got championships right now for AEW. Ah uh, shoot, so you no know group up. To, they wear trunks. 
Uh, one guy's bald with the with the goatee. The other guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the revival. Revival. I think phenomenal, they phenomenal tag team. Yeah. They are the best tag team. I don't care who's got straps or not straps. Take the straps out of the question. They are the best tag team in the AEW. Uh, they are absolutely phenomenal. They know what they're doing and why they're doing it. That's why I like Nick Nelson, because he knows yeah. what he's doing and why he's doing it. He just doesn't go out there and do a bunch of moves. Everything Nick does is for a reason. Mm-hmm. Kyle Pro, Kyle Pro is phenomenal. Okay. I, and I think doesn't Nick Nelson have our TV title right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I believe yeah. I believe he does. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the AWF heavyweight belt on him eventually again, too. He is mm-hmm. he's just don't count Nick Nelson out. I watch his matches and he, he's a prick the way he is at times and all that. But my mm-hmm. God, the guy, the guy just, he's so tactical and he's so, everything is deliberate on what he's doing and why he's doing it. Everything is for a reason. He's, he, he the way he maneuvered, he is the cat, he's a captain. He's a general of the ring. He truly mm-hmm. is. There aren't many guys and, and, and he's still young. He's got a lot of years left. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's going to go down as one of the better wrestlers to ever come out. I, I will put him, he could, he could have absolutely have wrestled in the old AWA days. A lot of the kids today couldn't have wrestled in the AWA mm-hmm. uh, cause their styles wouldn't have allowed them. And, and they're just, uh, just the whole mechanics of it. A lot of the younger generation, they don't have the, they don't have a lot of the mechanics, the high flying, all the, all that crazy stuff. They're better than our generation was but it's the tactical maneuvers and what you're doing and why you're doing it and 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 getting the things that they get out of getting mileage out of something uh i just don't see that anymore you don't you don't see it anymore not as much anyway but there are some guys that come along like nick nelson's that uh northern force they are absolutely uh Next to Riley Jackson and Levy Cruz, they are the next best tag team probably in all the Midwest. But I'll put Le- I'll put I'll put Levy Cruz and Riley Jackson at the very top. They have the belts. They do get it. And the, the neat thing about them is they're young. They got a lot of years ahead of them. They could be absolutely a force to be reckoned with everywhere they go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they are definitely awesome. And there's they, I've yeah, I've seen them a number of times together and then separately, but yeah, together they are uh, an awesome force. To, it's to something play. when they when they're together, it's like it's almost like a light bulb goes on. I mean, it's just absolutely together. They are they're both great individual wrestlers, but together, mm-hmm. it's like that recipe is complete. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like yeah. everything has been mixed right and. Just hold on because you're gonna really get a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and can't wait to see uh, what they do in the future and future for AWF as well. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up. I'm not gonna leak anything out as far as possible legendary guys that you're gonna see, but I've been talking to a few. Uh, we got, we got a lot of shows coming up. We got, I mean, I think in like what did I tell you we have in July, like. Mm-hmm seven shows in July, like three or four shows in, uh, in August, uh, three or four in September, uh, mm-hmm. two or th- two or three in June. It's, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hey, if you guys want to see where our, our dates are, go to pro com or just go to, uh, a AWF, uh, wrestling Facebook and you can check our schedules are either places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I know Jesse's been to plenty of AWF shows, but yeah. I hope it's somewhere that I can uh, definitely go to one because I've I've still yet to see what the AWF is all about in person. So, where where, where are you living? I'm currently in, in the cities, kind of near uh, uh, Bloomington. So, or uh, currently in Shockby. So, so yeah. you you never did you ever you never went? We were right until they closed down. We were wrestling at the uh, American Legion in Richfield. Do you remember when I was doing that, Jess? Not too long yep. ago, and yep. we were we were filming it. It was great, but mm-hmm. they shut down that whole building. Shut down. Is the building even there anymore? 
Oh, uh, I haven't heard I about it in it years. Is. Yeah. I think I think they, they mowed it down. The city of Richfield bought it. And this place oh. in Egan, and I cannot remember the name, but if you go, you'll see it. And that's the match on uh, six ten. It's like mm-hmm. a, it's a sports complex that's owned by the Shriners. You know, like the Shrine Circus. Mm-hmm. And we've got a show there on six ten, and then we've got another one there on nine. Let me tell you right now. Uh, nine ten, so September tenth. If it goes well, we'll be there on a regular basis. That's where we'll do our TV tape. It's in a beautiful, it's a hmm. beautiful setup. It really is. And Egan's central. Egan's not too far from Minneapolis. It's no. not too far from the southern people. The north. It's a it's a very reachable area. You know, the whole thing is, is we do our shows in so many far different places that a lot of the people's in the city say, you know, they don't want to drive that far. I get it. But we're trying to reach here. Our television show goes to every home in Minnesota. We got to reach people. You got to let them know we're there. You got to get, get that show out there. So we go everywhere. That's what we do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Egan's definitely in a great town. So, and that, yeah, it's really close to me. So where are you from originally? Uh, um, uh, originally I was uh, born in Burnsville. So, Okay, so I used to live in Burnsville, a town called Villadu, a uh, neighborhood called Villadu Park. You ever heard of Villadu Park? Uh, so if you, know, you know where Canelli Road is? Highway oh, 13. Okay. I, I, I lived in Villadu. I, I actually went uh, mm-hmm. to my elementary years, William Byrne, if you know where William Byrne is. It's an elementary school. It's just it's off of Cliff Road uh, in, in Burnsville. It's uh, like Cliff and... It's like by Cliff and 13, where Cliff and 13 come together. But I went to William Byrne. Would have, would have gone to the Burnsville High School, but we ended up moving down to Egan, and then I went to a school called Rosemont High School, mm-hmm. which is just down the road from where you grew up. Did you go to Burnsville High School? Uh, no, I, I was bar- born in Burnsville, did, but but then uh, transferred over to Shockby, Minnesota. So gotcha. pretty much grew up in Shockby all 18 years, so. Carl Kaselke's kid, the ex Minnesota Viking, his kid went there. His kid was a uh, a state champion there for Shakopee, and I he went on to he went on to play football somewhere. I can't recall. Carl Kaselke used to play for the Vikings, but we've mm-hmm. done shows all down there. I've done them, and we're probably gonna we're actually we have a show at Lesueur High School next year. Just don't remember what the date is. I've got the contract and just don't have it written down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, things are things are I I love this business. I really have. It's mm-hmm. I've traveled, I've met a lot of people. I'm not the richest guy in the world, but that's it's not important to me. I I, I actually mm-hmm. have a love for it. And uh I think because I have a love for it and I've done it for so long, I think that's what's kind of given me the ability to 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 run all these shows that I do. It's just uh it's mm-hmm. it's it, it's great. We've got great talent, we've got guys coming in from all over the place. I'm blessed. I I know Jade Roller. You know the name Jaden Roller? Jesus. He's down. He he wrestled for us, and he's down. He's married to Joel Laurinaitis' animal's daughter, Jessica. And he's actually going to come back, and I think he's working a show for us. Mm-hmm. I, 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 don't, he's, I can't remember. I think it's in July sometime he's coming back and working a show for us. But he was, he broke into the business with Nick Nelson. He was from Bismarck, North Dakota. Then he moved down to Ohio, but now he's moving back to, to North Dakota again. So he's another guy that you're mm-hmm. going to see with us on a regular basis. And what a phenomenal talent. Ooh. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, boy. Yeah. You're All ringing right. up. Somebody's I'm ringing calling. up. Yeah. <laughs> Got to give us 619s. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, yeah, it's been awesome having you on, Tony. Yeah. And, yeah, I know we've a uh, long time in the making, but we finally got it on here. Got a, got to see what Tony Nanucci is all about and hear your career and uh, AWF. So, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, I've been blessed. I love the business. I love doing what I do. I love – seeing the folks i it, it's just i love doing the commercials and all the goofy stuff i do i, I mean I, and i'm gonna be 57 years old and i don't see myself slowing down for a long long time and it's uh i mm-hmm. love the business i love seeing these young kids uh and the potential and it, it's it's just it's just kind of it's kind of neat to be able to 
I've seen the locker room change so many times and to still be able to be in the business and be around it and be in a locker room and see these young kids come in. And it's just, it's fantastic. I love it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for having You're me. You're welcome, Tony. Yeah. All right. We'll talk, we'll talk to you soon. All yep. right. Talk to you soon, Tony. Take care. Have a good yeah. one. All right. Life is in the...